everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today. We have one of the stars of Drop Dead Diva is here to talk with us. Lex Medlin is here. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner. And Jasmine is here. Yes, I am. Hello, everybody. And uh, Lex, thank you so much for coming on. We're big Team Owen fans. So this is yes. so exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Not everybody was, but <laughs> some, but, uh, but some people were more than I thought. That's yeah. Cool. I mean, I was it was I was actually looking at the like fan pan fan boards and stuff like that yesterday, some of the Reddit's and stuff, and and there were a lot there were a lot of Owen fans. Out yeah, there. I think I think that's why I ended up being on the show because initially I was supposed to be just a four episode arc at the end of season three, uh, <clears throat> and then I think because Brooke and I became such good friends off screen very very quickly and mm -hmm. i think that read on screen yeah because people kept talking about our chemistry and we never thought about it we're just like no we just like each other we're good friends yeah. uh and i think maybe my character was one of the first to come in as a love interest that actually people were maybe wanted to see her with mm -hmm. and i don't know if that had happened a lot so i think that's what kind of opened the door for me to join the show yeah there have been a couple there was tony for a couple of episodes and then there was the doctor but yeah, you were the first real competition for Grayson. Yeah, they were dead. They were just yeah. dead. No, <laughs> I'm sure they were lovely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's what it was. Is Josh, the creator, and and the uppers kind of saw that I, I tested well, and they were like, you know what, maybe maybe we'll try this for a little yeah. bit and see where it goes. So, how did you first get started acting as a whole? What inspired you to kind of get into the field? Oh boy, uh, 40 years ago, um, a long time ago, I, I got into speech speech and debate in high school, which if you don't know what it is, you the, the speech part of it, you get up and you act out like 10 minutes of a play and you act out all the characters, right? Mm -hmm. A buddy of mine was doing it. I, I saw him do it and I'm like, I'm going to try that. So uh, I started doing that and it went well. It went very well. I, did very well. I was in Arizona at the time and I won a, okay. a lot of coaches and it was great. And then uh, in 89, I came out to California to go to the Academy of Dramatic Arts. At the time it was in Pasadena. Now I think it's in Hollywood. Mm. Uh, and my class with me was Paul Rudd, graduated oh. from Pauly, uh, and Matt Lillard, a couple other people. But uh, yeah, and so then I, I just started dipping my toe into it. Uh, started with commercials. Did a lot of commercials in the beginning. That was my bread and butter. Uh, and then my first theatrical gig was the original 90210 um nice yeah and then i did a friends i did a friends that i still get a check for every year because it's a it's the <laughs> dick clark's rocking new year's eve episode so they air it every new year's eve so every new year's i get a nice little check from friends that i did 25 years ago <laughs> uh, nice. and then i did mostly comedies and then uh here's here's an interesting note that i haven't discussed with anybody so i had a briefly lived sitcom called happy hour it was on fox we did 13 of them they only aired four but one of the other regs in the show was Brooke Dorsey. And if you don't uh -huh. know who Brooke Dorsey is, right. So the show got canceled, but we all still kept in touch. And I remember I, I was up at Brooke's house once and she, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you working on? And she goes, well, it's the show. And I'm kind of like the dead girl, but <laughs> she comes and she was, and I had, I had no clue what the show was about. I had no clue what any of it was about. And Brooke Dorsey was, it was, we, we, we were good friends. And it wasn't until I was shooting the show. And I think it was in season four when, uh, Owen and Jane were supposed to come together and at one point Brooke Elliott and I kissed and I had the moment where I was like I think I'm kind of kissing Brooke Dorsey here <laughs> and it just freaked me out <laughs> but uh anyway I'd never I'd never thought about that till recently that uh that 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 connection um but anyway uh I was doing most comedies and then I, I was on a drama called Southland briefly and that launched me into dramas mm -hmm. uh, and that's about two years after that was when I when I got uh, uh diva Mm -hmm. and I, had no, was... I had no idea what it was. I'd never seen the show. I think I'd seen a billboard of it on a, mm -hmm. on a, a bus maybe, but I had mm -hmm. zero clue what it was about. And I had no idea the fan base was so passionate. Yeah. Well, it's such a unique show. You just don't have characters like this on any other show. I guess not, you know, and yeah. it's, it's fascinating to me because right now I'm, I'm a, a regular on a CSI Vegas. Uh, that's why I have, usually I just have a mustache for that character. But, you know, it's a big network show. And I thought people would pretty much recognize me from that. But just last week, we were in San Francisco for our kids' spring break. And we're sitting at IHOP. And I'm sitting <laughs> there with my, 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 my little 11-year-old son. We're waiting on a table. 
And this this little woman in her 60s, she leans into me. She's sitting right next to me and she goes, are you Lex Medlin? And I went, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I am. She goes, oh, I'm a big fan. And I'm like, oh, and then she leans over to her granddaughters and they all start speaking a foreign language. And I'm, I said, I'm sorry, where are you from? And she goes, well, I'm from Costa Rica. And my, my granddaughters are from Brazil. And I went, and, and you know me? You know my work? And there was a pause. And then I finally went, drop dead diva. And they went, oh, 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 and they got all excited. And I'm like, here I am on this network show. And the thing that people remember is, is diva. It has yeah. such a connection in people. Yeah. Amazing to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would be, I would be excited too. I'd be right around. <laughs> I know like even going back to like all your work I'm looking at like okay I love you from Rob Daddy but I love you from this but I think about like I know you for somewhere else and I keep going back I'm like oh my gosh season two episode five of charm and I just like <laughs> went back in time like that's how I know <laughs> oh, a very younger version of me yes I was like wait a minute, is it the same people I'm like you age gracefully, by the way. Oh, you're very <laughs> kind. I don't feel that gracefully, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm on hiatus in this show, so I'm letting the beard grow out. But I'm noticing there's a there's definitely a lot of gray, a lot of gray in there. Well, so Josh told us that originally that Owen was written as a 29 year old surfer type. Uh, yes. So how did you yeah. end up getting considered for the role? Did, did you just wait against cackling. type? Or... My wife is cackling in the other room. Um, <laughs> It, it cracks me up because I remember I got the script and I'm like, 29 year old surfer is a judge. Are you kidding me? Come on guys. Let, let's grow up here a little bit. <laughs> and so yeah. here's the funny thing about that, about Diva was they, they called me on a Monday and said, you have the audition on Thursday. Now that Monday I was at the hospital with my wife who was having a C-section giving birth to our son. Oh my gosh. So it, I don't, you can imagine that week was completely insane. Yeah. And God bless my wife. She's in her hospital gown in the bed reading the lines with me. And it was eight pages uh, of, and I was a judge at the time of, of legal, a lot of legal. And mm -hmm. the Wednesday before, I just couldn't get it down. I was just, my mind was, you know, on the 30 million other things going on, sure. our, our, our new baby. And sure enough, we brought our, my son home on Thursday at around noon. And the audition was at two. And I wasn't going to go. I called my people and I said, I can't. I, I'm not prepared for this mentally. And then like at one o'clock, I went out to my office and I ran it and it went okay. It went pretty well. And I went and I looked at my mother-in-law who was helping us out, staying with us, helping. And I said, just take care of the family. Just give me two hours. I'm going to go run and do this audition. Let me go do this and, I'll, and, and then I'll be back. I went, I did it. And the funny thing was I walked into the room to audition and it was lit really horribly. It was like yellow. And I remember looking at my skin going, I look jaundiced. What's going on here? <laughs> but it went, the, the, the audition went well. And then I yeah. get home. 10 o'clock the next morning on Friday. And, and by the way, for me, the way I survive auditioning is the minute I walk out of the room, I forget it. I forget the line. I, I, I'm just go on to the next one. That's how I, I've survived for 34 years. So I literally went home that night, forgot it. That part's dead. 10 o'clock the next morning, my people called me and said, hey, so the lighting wasn't good. They want you to come back to the creator, Josh Berman's office in Hollywood, and do it again. And I went, yeah, no, not doing that. <laughs> uh, hung up the phone. But luckily, my people know me. And I, sure enough, I went up to the office, I ran it and I'm like, all right, I still have it together. I still have it. And I called back and I'm like, of course I'm going to go. And they're like, we figured you would go on. <laughs> and then uh, I went to Josh Berman's office in, in, in uh, it was like the 15th floor of some high rise in Hollywood with much better lighting and did it again. Uh, and it went well again. And unbeknownst to me, I found out later, they were talking because we shot in Georgia and they were talking to Brooke in Georgia, and they were basically showing her pictures on the phone of the guys they were considering. And Brooke was going, mm-mm, mm-mm. And I guess she showed him my picture, and Brooke went, that's the one. And I was huh? like, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I got it. Uh, I, the, the next Tuesday, they called and said, you booked it. And then I had the fun moment where I got to walk into the house, and my wife, who with a 10-day-old son and a four-year-old daughter, and go, hi, honey. I booked a job, but I have to go to Georgia for two months. And uh, she started crying. And then she said, yeah, go, 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 go make the money. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah, that's when it started. Well, how did you even get submitted for the role if it was this 29 surfer type? It's a great, I don't, I think, oh, uh, the casting director, Carol Kritzer, she knew me. She had cast me, ironically, in the original CSI years before, but she knew me and she was a fan and she just, she just thought outside the box. And then sure enough, on the very first rewrite, 
suddenly I was a sailor. I was no longer a surfer. I was a guy in his late thirties sailor. Oh. Uh, and that's what, that's, that was the change they made. And oh, okay. the moment for me was uh, the last episode of, of, of season three, which was supposed to be my last episode. And I've been, I've been in Georgia for two months and I'm sitting in my hotel room and I get the script and there's an open, there's a scene in the beginning where we're at dinner, Brooke and I are at dinner and I say, the America's Cup has called me and I'm going to go off. Oh, to- yeah. Yes, and, yes. Right. And so I'm reading it going, oh, that's how they got rid of, that's how they get rid of Owen. Because, you know, I'm only four episodes. So I'm like, oh, okay. But at this point, I'm kind of invested in the show. I'm like, well, I want to see what happens here. And so I'm <laughs> flipping through the pages and it gets to the very end when she's on an airplane and you hear a voice say, is this seat taken? And it turns and it's Owen. And I'm in my hotel room and I go, oh, it's not Grayson, it's Owen. Look at that. And I keep reading. And then I put the script down and I go, Oh shit! I'm Owen. Oh no! Uh, and I literally, I called my wife and I went, I-, "I don't know what's happening here, but the lead is running away with my character." And I called my people and I'm like, "Have you heard anything?" And they're like, "No." Uh, and then about a month and a half later, two months later, we were back in LA, and we went up to Josh Berman's house. He was showing the last two episodes as, as kind of a, a, a party, a rap party. And I walked into uh, his house and he came up to me and he's like, "We want to make a deal with you. We want to make you regular." And I went. Yeah, I'm not going to say no. So yeah, let's make that happen. And that's how it happened. So yeah, they changed it from that. And I, I give credit to uh, Carol Kritzer for thinking outside the box. And normally I'd be like, this is a waste of time. They're looking for a 29 year old surfer. That ain't me. Uh, but for some reason I did it and it was, it was just meant to be, I was supposed to be that part. It's one of those, yeah. those, one of those things. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Like, definitely, because I, like, we both were shocked, all the fans, especially that season three ending, like, shook everybody. Like, like you're especially about, you know, thinking you're going to be on still because you're so invested now. We're like, okay, this is definitely the twist that we needed for the show because... I would know what would happen. You were not on the show still. (laughs) Yeah. So Josh told us that, that he said that we never thought the chemistry would be so strong between Jane and Owen. Um, Do you think there was a point where they could have gone like team Owen and, and done that? Or do you think they were always and and game? I don't think, I don't know if they ever would have, but (laughs) I, I, there was a part of me that look. I, I understand the show, and mm-hmm. the, the the overall love story is 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 Grayson and, and and Jane. I, I get that. I'm not naive to that. Yeah. But there's a part of me that in real life sometimes things don't work out that way. Doesn't mean it's bad though. Mm-hmm. I, I have. I, I met my wife when I was 32, and I had had relationships before that. But my the love of my life came at me later when I didn't expect it, and so there was always a part of me that thought it might be pretty great if it doesn't end up in your typical storybook romance. Mm -hmm. Maybe it ends up with a different romance. And there's a part of me, I'm going to lie to you, that I think Jane and Owen would have been the greatest legal team in the history of (laughs) mankind. Yeah. You You heard it first, y'all. You heard it first. (laughs) And I love the fact that from second one, Owen was so in love with her. He was so in love with her. And he was in love with her physically and mentally emotionally across the board he would always talk about her legal mind and he talked about it in almost a sensual way he was so enamored with the way she thought yeah that's then- right <laughs> <laughs> well that's the thing with, with like because grayson gets mad at at jane saying you almost married owen 
once he finds out and it's like you almost married vanessa thank you with like four other four other people including kim yeah life is messy and that's why i did (laughs) it it wouldn't it wouldn't have been the worst thing if they had ended up and i think even brooke would have wouldn't have minded it either but but I, like I said, I'm not naive. Uh, the, the the show's basis was on those two characters, Jane and uh, Grace, and getting together. So I, I understood why they went that way. But yeah, I was open to maybe them being together. And I yeah. think it could, been, it could have been pretty powerful. Yeah. Was it fun playing the judge for all these like crazy cases that you had? I mean, then you were an attorney later on. But Yeah, I was a judge for the, the first four, and then that for season four, and then they made me an attorney for the last two seasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, most of them are kind of based on something real mm-hmm. in society, which is always fascinating. And uh, it, it was it was nice to be a part of something that was dealing with with, with issues, mm-hmm. uh, real issues, and trying to trying to deal with them sensitively. Yeah, and some of them were just wacky. It always cracked me up because I remember I was up at my daughter's school, and one of her friend's mom came up, and she was an attorney. And she kind of just starts going, oh, I saw that. I, I watched, I saw that episode. This is BS. This is, and just kind of <laughs> taking it apart. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's a TV show. And I, but then I think I was like. <laughs> People so switching watch, bodies. Like, what are you going to watch next week? And she's like, yeah, of course I'm going to watch next week. I'm like, oh, <laughs> God, then you can take it apart all you want. You're still going to watch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People are switching bodies for the love of God. <laughs> God I don't think you can put it. It's not reality. But um, yeah, yeah it, was, it was fun. I had never done that much legal copy before. So at the beginning, I was a little concerned mm-hmm. with how to do it. But then once I got into it, it's like a muscle. I, I got used to doing it. And yeah, then it just became a challenge. One of the all-time, my all-time favorites is the Medieval Times episode. <gasps> that was yes. so funny. Oh, it cracked me up because they have me in that <laughs> stupid hat with that <laughs> stupid outfit. And then what do they use for the credits at the beginning? That outfit, me in that outfit. <laughs> as Owen and I'm like really out of all the stuff I shot that's the one you're gonna that was so much fun though we shot in a real medieval times in like northeast Georgia and uh yeah that that those are the moments when for me even though I've been doing this a long time it just it feels like Hollywood it's like we are making a crazy little movie here man <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> oh yeah this you guys so speaking of Drop Dead Diva what is your favorite part about working on the set with Drop Dead Diva Besides all the fun cases that you get, because we always talk about how every character gets like these serious cases, these out of mind cases, or in your case, all these fun, like out of the box, like I'm going to be a superhero in court type of thing. <laughs> yeah, that outfit was real interesting on me, wasn't it? The uh, Bono <laughs> man. <laughs> you know, the whole thing for me was just, it was an adventure. We sh- I shot you know, I had to go to Georgia for six months every year. And then, like you said, I, I never knew what was going to happen until I got the scripts. So I would pick up the script going, we'll see what happens with Owen this week. <clears throat> I, I really had no idea. So across the board, it, it was an adventure from the second I got it. And it came out of nowhere, out of nowhere for me. <clears throat> so I just went along for the ride. And then the, the probably, but again, the, one of the best parts was also working with Brooke. She's She's one of the best actors I've ever worked with. <clears throat> she can break down a script better than anybody I've, I've ever met. I've never seen anything like it. And her and I approach it very similarly. We, we, we work really hard when we go home at night so that the next day when we show up, we are, we're ready to just go. And that woman, I mean, they would give her two and a half pages of a monologue with an insane amount of legal in it. And she would get up there and just crush it. There were so many times where I would just sit back and go, oh my God, look at her go, look at her. <laughs> And just watch her do her thing, and uh, that was that was a real joy, working with her. Yeah, in the case yeah. of her. well, she just has such confidence. All of her, like in Sweet Magnolias, also dropped a diva. Like her characters, mm-hmm. just are never like apologizing, or they just have this like glow and confidence that I really love. That's her. She's yeah. a she's a, a she's a very uh, strong woman. I think she always has been strong and yeah. woman. And I think she's, again, that's perfect for the role. I mean, mm-hmm. she really is. I think, I don't know the full story, but I know when she auditioned, Josh right away was like, oh, you're, you're it. You're absolutely it. And the fact that she can appeal across the board. I mean, I know, I think after season two, she went to Japan and they were fanatical about her. I mean, they were, just, and I'm like, 
I don't know. She she couldn't be more, any more different than a, a Japanese woman, but it doesn't it didn't matter. They yeah. were so in love with the things that she portrays, the strengths and every and, and, and the vulnerability that yeah. she can portray. That's another thing. She can she can be real vulnerable when she needs to be, which isn't easy to do in front of the camera. But I mean, she can throw on the the tears, man. She would break my heart sometimes when we were doing mm -hmm. secrets. Now, did you like have to work at all on your chemistry, or it was just effortless? It was yeah. easy. It came, it came pretty easy. It did. You know, I got there and it was toward the end of season three and towards the end of seasons, it, it can be tiring, especially when you're doing legal day in and day out. And so by the time I got there, I could see she was getting a little worn down. And I was like, you know what, this, this, this lady needs a friend. And so I just said, Hey, I'm, I'm Lex. Uh, and we just started talking and right away, we kind of, we just, we just connected uh, as, as friends. And then uh, very quickly, I was like, Hey, come on, let's go get some dinner and let's, let's, let's hang out. And, you know, we got to, we got to be love interests for the next two months. Let's let's try to make mm -hmm. it work. It just did. Yeah. It just happened instantly like that. So when uh, when Owen goes missing after they get engaged, uh, that was we'll talk about a, that. What was with that? <laughs> so I can tell you exactly what that was. Um, <laughs> that initial contract on season four, I was uh, doing ten out of the thirteen episodes. That was what my contract was. Okay. I thought they were going to just scatter it where I'd be missing an episode here or an episode there or an episode there. But Josh and his genius said, nope, we're going to put all three of them uh, in the same time. And to be honest, for me, I didn't mind because it allowed me to go home. I had a new son and and, and my uh, youngest daughter. And so I didn't mind taking a month off and I went back home and got to be with my family and my wife. Uh, but uh, that was the reason for that. And then on Season five, I did all 13, and then and six, I did all 13. But for that season four, I was only supposed to do 10 of the 13. So that's the storyline that they, they came up with. Welcome to the Pilot Podcast. My name is BJ. And my name is Me Too. And we promise this promo is worth it, so please don't skip ahead. We're two judgy friends who put our judgmental skills to work for you. We review the pilot episodes of new and popular shows and shows that our listeners request to answer your question, should I watch this? Look, a lot of us are spending a lot more time at home, and yes, we should be reading and trying new projects and enriching ourselves, but does anything beat binging a great show? Let us take the guesswork out of deciding what your next show will be. Tune in to The Pilot Podcast at thepilotpodcast.com. Because we're like, because then later when he he's uh, getting upset with Jane, I was like, you left. So you should be understanding. You were just gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wasn't thrilled about that. but. <laughs> You got to do what's written on the page. That's right. <laughs> there were times like I know the beginning of season five, Owen's pretty rough with her with with Jane yes. for the first like three or four. And I remember I, I I did call Josh and I'm like, hey, can we not have this go on for the whole season? I I miss them being simpatico and I miss them even if they're not going to be a couple, they're a really good team. Yeah, so we can get we can get back into the that. And Josh was like, yeah, of course. So yeah. at some point, it went on longer than I would have liked, but at some point, like it was episode four or five of season five, they came back together. There's yeah. a great scene where I come to her door and I'm like, hey, Jane, you know, I've, I've been a real jerk. And and there's a great moment if you rewatch it. At the very end, there's a pause. And I kind of look in the room like, like I'm, like I'm going to maybe come inside the apartment. And then I don't. And I leave. Mm -hmm. it, to this well, day, it shivers because it was all in the moment where I was just working with... Brooke and I, I had this moment of like maybe I'll oh, no I can't and it's, yeah. just, it's so real and, and, and beautiful and, and simple to me well and I I don't know if it's that scene but I really like when you say to her well for you I was fun like I mm -hmm. I was happy that was that, that was, was after the, that was six season six I think no five. it was, Wait, it was after the wedding Right. Yes. Yeah, we're anyway. season five. Well, a couple of episodes out there. Like, I was wedding. perfectly happily being a single dude. <laughs> that was that was how I justified Owen's behavior. Yeah. Was, I, I I said he's he's never been in love like this ever in his life. Mm -hmm. And and you know sometimes when you're in love and it falls apart, you do crazy stupid things. There, yeah. There's movies written for, about that and songs written <laughs> about it. You know since the beginning of time. Uh, so I think. And I like that speech a lot because he was being very honest about, I was doing just fine. And then you came into my world and now I'm a complete train wreck. I don't know what to do with myself. And that's where I think a lot of that, uh, not hostility, but animosity, like that, where like, like, like that anger came from was him just, I was fine until I met you and now I'm a train wreck. I don't know what to do. Yeah. 
It felt so organic at the same time. Like speaking of season five, let's talk about like when, well, in the season four, season five, when Owen like has a heart attack and we're all figuring out, did he end up in, with like, did OJ end up going to be in Owen's body? How is the situation happening? Because everything was playing so fast. Like, were you in your mindset thinking you're going to play OJ? Or, uh, I mean, I got that script at the end of the season <laughs> four. four, four. <clears throat> and I was like, initially, I, I was like, ooh. And then I got excited. I was like, I was drooling a little bit because as an actor, that could be really fun. And I wanted, and if I did it, I didn't want to do it like, like a guy acting like a woman. I wanted to be, I wanted to have a woman in my body and a woman experiencing the things that she would experience being yeah. in a guy's body. I wanted that. But anyway, I also knew that sometimes the show would have a cliffhanger and then it wouldn't go that direction. The other cast had kind of warned me about that. And I was like, all right. So finally about, I don't know, about two months before we were supposed to start season five, I called up Josh and I'm like, you, you got to give me a heads up here, which way it's going. Because if, if it is going to be a woman in a man's body, I got some work I got to do here over the next month to get it ready. And if it's not, it's fine too. Cause I loved Owen. So I was like, and he said, no, no, no. At that point he was like, no, no, you're, you're, you're going to be still Owen. And you know, he gave me an idea of some of the ways the season five was going to go. And so that kind of, I calmed down. I was like, all right. And so let's get Owen's shoes back on and let's, let's, let's jump into season five. But yeah. It was crazy. Like getting that script was nuts. <laughs> Did I would ever... definitely would have loved the blooper for that. Like, just like yeah. that, that one snippet, that one scene, like, justify for the fans, like, this is what it could have went, but we didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that could have been fun. Did you ever get to do a musical number? Because they didn't really have any in five no. and six. Oh, man. No, they kind of stopped them uh, towards, yeah, towards the end. I did get to see a couple of the season one and season two. They were amazing. Yeah. And way back in the day, I was I was a, mu a musical theater guy a long time ago. I think the last I did Into the Woods, I was Rapunzel's Prince and the Wolf. To win a agony. Of yeah, agony. <laughs> so there was definitely a part of me that I, I, I was a little sad that I didn't get to, didn't get to be a part of that because they looked like fun. Yeah. We were cheated yeah. out, guys. We were cheated out. <laughs> yeah, it was just the probably like budget, those later yeah. seasons, because yeah. they almost canceled the show, right? Yeah. They Season four, it looked like it was going to get canceled. I was in pilot season, not having a good time. And then <laughs> I think they, they revamped the budget and the fans made a huge stink, which was really nice. And and they yeah, brought it back to life. But uh, yeah, we were there were budget constraints on the last two. Yeah. But we got it done. We got it done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh did you have any favorite like guest stars that you got to work with? I mean, uh, Patty Duke was mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I, I went up to her trailer and I was like, Hey, I'm Lex. I play Owen on the show. And we talked for two hours. No she way. Could, not, could not have been a kinder, sweeter person. Uh, and I remember when I was coming back from the heart attack episode, I went to set to go say hey to Brooke and the gang. And I showed up and it was, it was, it was a funeral scene where she was like, she's saying goodbye to the relationship between, and Joan Rivers mm -hmm. was up there speaking. <clears throat> and I sat in the back and I watched Joan Rivers. I don't know how old she was. But she just kept riffing and riffing, and it was hilarious. <laughs> and everybody's supposed to be very serious because it's supposed to be a funeral. So right. I'm laughing, and I'm my heart is breaking for this poor woman who's just killing herself up there with great stuff. And everybody's just sitting there stoically. But uh, <laughs> she took it like a she took it like a champ. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones. There's so many. Yeah. I never worked with I never worked with uh, Kim Kardashian. She wasn't in my storyline. So oh I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't. That was season five or six. She came. I don't remember. Yeah, five. I think the Pakery. Oh, and uh, I loved John Rass Rassenberger. He was from uh, here. Yeah, he came as uh, as Kim Caswell's dad. I got to know John. Mm -hmm. That was pretty great. Yeah, you got to work with pretty much all of the lawyers yeah. uh, in the cast. Uh, that uh, because cause when they moved you over. Um, you got to work with pretty much everybody as far as the main cast members. Yeah, it was set up where obviously every week Jane has a case and then we kind of just traded off every other episode with, with who was going to have the other case and then we all mm -hmm. kind of worked, uh, worked together. Mm -hmm. I always liked the way uh, uh, Owen and Kim Caswell operated together. Mm -hmm. Towards the end, you, you, you could see they actually... I don't know if you call it a friendship. I don't know if anybody can be friends with Kim Caswell, but <laughs> but uh, you could see that they actually had a respect for each other towards the end. There was a nice scene where she had kissed a client or something and they're discussing it. 
and she throws a pillow at me and I throw it back and I'm like, but it, 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 it's a really nice relationship. Yeah. I was kind of wondered what could have happened if we'd had more seasons, if, if they would have started working together more. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, what did you think when you first saw that they were doing this Stacy uh, Owen arc? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I didn't mind. I'm April's April. and I became friends. We became really good friends working together. And, and so I was like, okay, but I do, you know, I had some, I have a a lot of female friends and I kind of ran it past them and they were like, "Uh uh-uh, no, sir, girl code. You don't do that. (laughs) So there were definitely some red flags where I went, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Yeah. Uh, And so, and yeah, and I saw, I I try not to go on socials too much because you, you know, for everybody, one person who says you're great, there's going to be somebody who says you're an idiot. So I try to stay away from it, but I saw a little bit, and I'm sure enough, I saw that a lot of women were not thrilled with 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 that storyline. But then by the end, people seem to have accepted it mm-hmm. on some level or another. Mm-hmm. It would have been interesting if we would have had another season to see where that headed. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think it 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 was a risk. It was a risky choice. And I asked Josh about that. I was like, <laughs> what did he say? Um, he said that he's like, well, we had a sit down between April and Brooke we talked about it <laughs> yeah I I I remember being kind of because I was Team Owen and I remember when it happened I was like uh. but uh but I think that there's enough chemistry there and it, it there's it, in a way it was nice because you want to kind of give all of your main characters a soft place to land mm-hmm. you right know, so you know, it certainly was better than Owen being alone, alone. Yeah. I agree completely because that was one of my fears was it would you know, the show would end and you would just think that poor Owen was just off being, you know, miserable somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I think towards the end of those last couple of episodes, they were actually, Owen and Stacy were really sweet together. Yeah. With having the, with having the baby and everything. And uh, the, I remember when I watched them, I was like, oh, you know, they, they, they've, they've got some potential here that they could be quite, quite sweet together. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, hopefully it could work. But yeah, there, when I first saw it, I was, I was concerned. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. I like the season finale. Honestly, like, how did you feel about the season finale? How everything, you know, do you feel everything was complete or you felt like he was wanting one more season? Or I, I don't know if you would ever feel like it was complete. I think, I think we thought we were going to get one more season just because oh. of the contracts. Mm-hmm. I think <clears throat> we kind of thought there's going to be maybe one more and then there wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, yeah, I think th- there was always going to be a, a sense of, of wanting more they're, mm-hmm. they're just because it was so beloved anyway I, I don't know how you could just wrap it up with a bow i, I don't know how uh, other than them being together i don't know well i think <laughs> if you if they did a reunion show which josh said that he had an idea <laughs> but <laughs> i think you would want to focus it on actually owen and stacy because it would be a little bit weird to have jane and ian as the focus because that's not who was the focus of the show. Like it worked for the ending, I think, but to have it be a reunion, I think you'd actually no. want to focus on the characters we know. But I, I, also know, know Josh, I know Josh Berman and he wouldn't be afraid to <clears throat> throw Grayson back into Grayson's body. You know what I mean? He would, I know, he, yeah. He's not afraid to do anything. <laughs> so if he wanted to have Grayson and Jane together, he'll figure out a way to make <laughs> that happen. And he won't care what anybody thinks. <laughs> it's going to be like a... <laughs> Like a zombie or something, like a corpse. <laughs> corpse. I watch that. Yeah. Yeah, hey, that's so true. Zombie Grayson, that's good TV. <laughs> that's true. 
I just want to know, did y'all name the babies Deb and Grayson because we had a boy and a girl? I just wanted to know that. No one said You know what? Nobody's ever asked me that, and I've never thought of that. Jasmine, that's amazing. Like, <laughs> I was sitting here thinking, like, I have these questions at the last episode. I'm like, okay, did they name the babies after them after they passed? Like, I just want to know. Like, there's so no, many. that would be. You know, especially the thing for Deb. me is I would never name them myself because I would, I would get a script that would tell me what the baby's names were. So it's like, I was kind of waiting, but it's a great, you know what? Next time I talk to Josh, I'm going to ask him that. If he okay, ever, good. And if he does, I will send you guys a message letting you know what the, yes. the baby's names are. Well, we have some fun, get to know you questions. We like to end the interview off with. Okay. So the first question is what is the best ice cream flavor? Oh boy. Butter pecan. Mm. Okay, good. What is your favorite color? Purple, the color of kings. Yeah, it's my favorite too. <laughs> okay, what music are you into? Uh, this isn't a line, but I am across the board. I listen to, if you go onto my radio or my into my radio, it is everything from Bach to U2 to uh, Beck to the, uh, not a ton of country, but a little here and there. Uh, but I, I really go across the board. I was a DJ a long time ago at a club. And so I got to know a lot of different music and uh, I love all kinds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sad because we could have had an episode with Owen doing like some type of DJ situation. Yeah, especially now, now that you sing. I mean, we, we've we said this on the podcast many times that our dream is to get you and Brooke Elliott in a Christmas movie. Hallmark like, Christmas like, movie. Like, we, 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 we prayed on that. Like- <laughs> My wife, every starting December 1st uh, on our house is a loop of Hallmark Christmas movies. It's constantly <laughs> okay. in the background of our house. All and right, she, you, she has yeah. been wanting me to be on a, a one of these for, for quite a while. It just hasn't you been. You tell your time. agent. Yes. You I need will. to make that happen. Like, like, we'll make your wife be in the, like, in the background just because she's like, as a guest, like we will make this happen. Like Hallmark hear us out. <laughs> We and would I promote think, it. I think, Brooke, I think Brooke would be open. Although she did, she did, she did a Christmas one. Yeah, last year. Yes, that, she, time, yes. that, that she executive produced also, as well as started. Yeah. Uh, but somehow she didn't cast me. Hmm. Um, no, well, no, she cast her co-star in yes. Sweet Magnolias, but now we can get her to cast you. Go back to. That's a great D. idea. More than anything, I wouldn't mind just some kind of reunion show. I would just yeah. love to see something to see where they're at. But I, I don't think know. it needs to happen. I mean, they've just been airing it on Hallmark Channel, on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Yes. And it seems to have done well. So, yeah. And like I, say, I still, I mean, <clears throat> I had a memory come up in Facebook, and it was my son when he was 10 months old. And it was when, at the end of season four, my, my wife came out with our, our two kids. And it just hit me. I went, that was a decade ago. A decade ago. I can't, I couldn't believe how, I know. You know, in some ways, it feels like it was just the other day. But the fact that it was a decade ago, and I still have 60-year-old Costa Rican women in IHOP going, I've dropped a diva. I mean, (laughs) that says something about the show. Yeah. Yes, it's stand the test of time. Even with the court cases that happened, we were talking about this on our last podcast, wrapping up, like, the court cases, everything that's been happening on your show, like, a whole decade ago, it still still rings true to this day. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's one of my favorite shows of all time i just love the show yeah. i'm glad wait, wait were there any other questions yes yes there yes. is uh, what's your uh what's your go-to date night food uh right now my wife is cackling again in the other room <laughs> right now uh it's a chicken piccata i, I I'm, oh. I'm very pleased with my chicken piccata you, you pound it out really thin bread it fry it, and then you just do a little bit of a angel hair with olive oil and garlic and then you know you pick your vegetable either mm-hmm. asparagus or, or broccoli Ooh. Yeah. One of my favorite things for dates was to bring them over and then I, I, I cook. I like to cook. So I would always kind of cook in front of them and that would kind of. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's your go to date night activity if you're going out and doing something? Oh, uh, going out? Sushi. Oh, yeah. Sushi. Not <laughs> <laughs> I won't. Uh, but yeah, sushi's our, our our go-to. We literally can just sit there. Oh, and you know what? We'll do a, a occasionally. We'll do a like a little pub crawl. We'll get an Uber and get a couple of different, Ooh. just like have a glass of wine here and another drink there, and we always end up just laughing and smiling and then nice. all to the kids. Yeah. Well, especially after the pandemic, it's feels all those kind of things feel all the more special. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. For your favorite, like, okay, for your favorite animal, would it be a dog or a cat? 
dog. Okay. So, Throwing it around. <laughs> I, I have a dog now. Uh, we had two pugs, Sushi and Saki, and they they lasted 17, 15 years. And then wow. the asked, I was devastated. I was like, I can't ever do with a dog. And then my wife made us get this guy. <gasps> oh, my oh. gosh. Look how cute. Such a boy. Say hi. Aww. Aww. <laughs> yeah. And now this. I didn't want another dog. And now I literally <laughs> live in fear that anything will ever happen to this gotcha. little Come angel. On. So, yes, well. I'm a very much a dog person. Which do you like better, beaches or mountains? Oh, that's a good question. Because I grew up in the mountains. <laughs> I think the mountains. But beaches is right behind it because we, we live pretty close to the beach now. And it's where we live with the kids in the summertime. But I do love the mountains. I love I love looking up at the sky, just stars. And uh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I live in Utah, so I, I understand that. <laughs> I know compared to this this week's weather reports of being like in the 80s this week for the past two days, like yesterday today. I'm like, where is this coming from? Thank you, California. Like yeah. this happened in the Central Valley. So I'm like, this is bipolar every day. <laughs> Last oh, you're, time you're in the Central Valley? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm in Fresno. Yeah, I'm in the Central Valley. Yeah, your your weather gets weird. I work on the beach and it's pretty consistent. Yeah, and I grew up I grew up in northern Colorado, so I know that oh, okay. much of the Rockies and it's it's a special kind of place. What is your favorite holiday to celebrate? Christmas. Uh I, I go total Griswold with the lights. I nice. go insane. I'm out front and we just and I love the tree. I love I love at night when everybody's in bed and like sitting with a cup of tea or something and just sitting with the the, the Christmas tree lights on in the quiet at dark. And I, there's something about it that just I don't know if it takes me back to my childhood or something, but it's so peaceful and I, I just I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's hard to beat Christmas because it's like a whole season, not just yeah. a day. Yeah, and the day is an event. Oh, well, yeah. And then yeah. <laughs> it lasts right. We now, we start it the day after Thanksgiving. The lights go up. And in fact, this year, I, I wrap lights around a tree we have in our front yard. And I just said, you know what? We're not taking them down. I love coming around the corner on our street and I see our tree still lit up in white lights. And I'm like, that's our house. Oh, we really got to get you in this Christmas movie. I'm, we I, definitely yeah, got to. Call your agent. Right. <laughs> I will. I'll do a petition on my Twitter. Like, yeah. This happened right we'll now. We'll start the hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said Owen for Christmas, but oh my God, know, right? Lex like, for Christmas. I would love to say <laughs> Owen for Christmas. Christmas. I'm fine either way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Last question. What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? God, I don't know if I have one. Uh, what's what is my favorite? Well, <laughs> I don't have a favorite favorite Hallmark movie, but I, I my one of my favorite romantic movies is uh, True Romance. Okay, yeah, no. Albert uh, Brooks, right? Patricia Arquette, no, Patricia Arquette and uh, uh, um, uh, Christian. What the heck's his name? No, it's a Tony Scott movie. It's a great. Oh, movie. Okay, what I'm, um, what, what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Uh, no, which one are you thinking of? Isn't isn't uh, Albert Brooks in one co called? something like true romance or real romance or something like that oh i'll look into it <laughs> uh, he's, he's in one of my other favorite movies defending your life um, oh, i love defending your life yeah it's <laughs> that kind of has dropped a diva vibes very much in your life yeah about what your life is all about but it's i the, the i do love at christmas time having the hallmark movies it now feels like part of our christmas holiday is having the movies in the background and my wife cracks me up because she's like they're gonna kiss at this moment she knows exactly what's going to happen. Modern romance. True. Oh, Modern yeah, yeah, romance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Sorry, I interrupted. No, you're good. But even though she knows ex kind of half, I mean, she can off oftentimes predict the plot five minutes in, but it doesn't stop her from sitting there and just watching the entire thing. And she absolutely loves it. And uh, yeah, like, I don't know if it's a comfort thing or what, but yeah. uh, I, I like having it on in the background during the season. Well, there is something comforting about knowing exactly what you're going to get and getting it. Mm hmm it's nice. <laughs> Diva wasn't that. <laughs> yeah. Diva true. was quite the opposite. You never knew what you were going to get, but yeah. there's something great about that too. Yeah. Think. Well, very good. You answered all the questions. Thank yes. you so much for coming on and talking with us. This was a blast. It's my pleasure. And I'll, I'll keep following you guys. And uh, yeah. And if we get any kind of reunion or anything, we will get yes. back together and discuss it. All right. Okay. We'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> Um, do you have social media or anything you want to share? Or <clears throat> no, I'm at Lex Medlin seventy seven on Instagram. Lex, uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on all of them right now. I'm on the show 
<clears throat> excuse me, my voice is going. Uh, CSI Vegas uh, Thursdays that that's wrapping up. We have I think three more episodes to air, and they're very very good. And I love the character. It's probably the, my favorite character I've ever. Well, Owen's in there too, but Bo Fanato is one of my favorite characters I've ever cool. played. Uh, yeah, and we got picked up for season three, so that'll be starting nice. next year. So nice. two. Cool, great. Well, thanks so much. It was so great to meet you. You too. And yeah, we'll hope for some kind of reunion thing. All right. Yes. And I'll talk to you said hi. Okay, great. Awesome. I'd like to thank Lex for coming on the podcast. This was a super fun interview. We really enjoyed it. And let us know what you think about all the things we've talked about in the comments or on Twitter. And Jasmine, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shereem16, S-H-R-E-E-M-1-6. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast at Homework's Pod and Homework's Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store. So check that out. And uh, thanks again to Lex. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.